When the hairdresser leaves you looking more like Hilda Ogden than Simon Le Bon, when the goods you've bought are faulty, when you feel you've been ripped off, or you're just not happy with the service you've been given, do you know what your rights are? Do you know where you stand with the law? Do you know how to get it right? Get, 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 get it right. Yes, but tell you. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, go on. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Yes, sir. I bought these jeans yesterday, oh, and when I think to do with me, thank you. Okay. Thanks, lab. Ta da. Uh. Excuse me. Yes, lab. I bought these jeans yesterday, and when I tried them on at home, I found the zipper being put in back to front. They're useless. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? You should have tried them on first, shouldn't you? Well, can I swap them for another pair then, please? No, I don't think so. That was the last pair in that size. Well, can I have my money back then? Look, it's nothing to do with me. You'll have to take it up with the makers. They're made in Korea. Anyway, you sold them to me. You've got to give me my money back. Look, can't you read? Now, I'm very sorry, but there's others who want serving, so if you don't mind. You must think I'm stupid. You've got to give me my money back. And as for that, it doesn't mean a thing. I should probably think it's illegal. All right, there's no need to be like that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll write your credit note. How about that? For the last time, I want my money back. Listen, I can't do that without a receipt. And uh, you haven't got one, have you? Sorry, love. Well, is she right? No. Whatever the shop, however you pay, if the goods aren't of merchantable quality, like Carol's jeans, the law says that you can return them and get your money back. You don't have to produce a receipt, but it usually helps if you've got one. And it's the shopkeeper, not the manufacturer, who must compensate you. But you're not entitled to anything if you simply change your mind about wanting the goods or if you damage them yourself. Nor can you claim anything for faults that you were told about or were so obvious that you should have noticed them before you bought the goods. And by the way, Carol was right. Signs saying no refunds given are illegal. If you see one, you should tell your local consumer protection or trading standards department. In the window, it says cut price offers. Clint, customer. Walk this way. Welcome to our humble tonsorial emporium. <laughs> now then, lovely boy, let's have a look. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I can see it now. What you want is the dallas sort of style, isn't it? No, no. I want streaks in my hair. I look dead good. My mate Kevin's got some in his hair. Oh, you mean highlights. I don't know if that's a good idea, lovely boy. I mean, you've had a perm only recently. Am I right? Yeah, but I've got strong hair, haven't I? It shouldn't make a difference. Oh, wouldn't you rather have an ordinary shampoo cut and blow dry? Or maybe our special? Don't come good, you. <laughs> Look, highlights are what I want, okay? Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, okay, then. 
But I'm not going to be responsible for it if there are any, let us say, unforeseen or undesirable side effects. In fact, Sharon Paper, I'd like you to sign this, absolving me from all responsibilities before I start. All right. Just get on with it. <laughs> Oh. oh, Sharon, it's been a long, long day, haven't it? Yeah. Oh, my feet, honestly, they can me. I've been on the this morning. I don't know what... Oh, 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 excuse me. Are you the proprietor of this, this... Tonsorial Emporium. And just what do you call this? Oh, it's not that bad. But, I've got a better looking lavatory brush in the house. Now look, my dear, it's all the fashion. The sort of thing that grows on you. It'll be a miracle if that lot ever grows again. Now look, my flower. I did warn him. But would he listen? Oh, no. He spurned my expert professional advice. You've an extremely headstrong boy there, you know. He's right there, actually, Mum. And you! Shut up! And you! You had no right to do that to my little baby. I demand satisfaction. Don't be all, dear. Look, I know my rights. Oh, uh, do you really? Well, I suggest you take a look at this, then. Signed by your little baby. Absolving me from all responsibility. Oh, you! Well, what do you think? Can Wayne and his mother do anything? Have they no rights in this situation? Under the Supply of Goods and Services Act 1982, a hairdresser like anyone else performing a service has to do the job to a reasonable standard and exercise reasonable care and skill. If he doesn't, then you can ask for compensation. Signing a document doesn't necessarily mean that you're signing away your legal rights. But if you're warned that something may be dangerous or unsuitable and you choose to ignore that warning, you could be on dodgy ground when it comes to claiming compensation. The test here is whether Clint acted reasonably and in a professional manner. Would a skilled hairdresser have refused to bleach Wayne's hair? What do you think? As a general rule, if you're asked to sign documents like this one, don't. And if possible, try to choose a hairdresser who belongs to the Hairdressing Council, which has a special registration scheme and complaint service to help in cases like this. Now, here we have something really special. Come and have a look at this. Gather up, come on. Real French perfume. Expensive stuff, this. It's called Mon Dieu. Look at that. Mon Dieu. Now, you'd pay about 20 quid for this in the shop. 20 quid. Ah, go on, sir. Have a whiff of that. Guaranteed to set your pulses racing. Hi, the same to you and all. This fragrant French perfume can be yours for only five pounds. Ah, uh, uh, you look like a right couple of... Uh, discerning men of the world. No, 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 no. Now, this could be our lucky day. No, because not only can I give you mon dieu at a rock bottom price, but I still have one or two items of genuine 22 karat gold jewelry that haven't yet been snatched up. Hey, I gotta get something for Maureen. She was so fed up, you know, rugby match and all that. I gotta get a piece off him. Yeah, and it's minus Sally's anniversary next week. If I get her something new, I'd be saving myself at least the tenner. Eh? Well, aye, right, come on. So much is this jewellery, then? Now I can see you're a very sensible gentleman. Because I mean, why pay for the most when you can get top quality here for just a fraction of the price? Now, for instance, look at this little number. Now, isn't this gorgeous? Look at this. 22 karat gold. Now, isn't that beautiful? What delicate workmanship. What fine gems. What... A load of rubbish. Pearls before swine, love. Pearls before swine. Not 20 quid, not 15 quid, not... On your life! <laughs> you ought to be on the stage, my dear. There's one leaving in 10 minutes. Only 9.99. Now, can you believe it? No, I can't! <laughs> Please. Can I have a look at it? Certainly, sir, but just be careful of the delicate workmanship. Yeah, it might fall apart in your hands. What's it for Here we are. Oh, just smell that fragrance, ladies. Go on. Oh. Well, it should kill the flies, any road. <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll take it. Ah, 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and give me a bottle of that stuff as well. Yeah, that's Ladies, now you have seen it on the Come telly on, Charlie, and seen it on. in the shop. Now move along, please. Uh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Why do people do it? If you buy from a street trader like this one, you're not likely to end up with the bargains you think you're getting. The goods may be counterfeit, clever copies, but not the real thing. And what if the goods are faulty? Well, Charlie here is a knack of disappearing at the sound of a dissatisfied customer. And remember, if you're buying gold jewellery, you check to make sure it's hallmarked. The law says it should be, unless it's too fine or small to be stamped. But then again, Charlie never did care too much about the law. What? Only buy from reputable traders you know you can trust. Be on the lookout for counterfeits or copies. Look for a hallmark on gold, silver or platinum jewellery. Tell your consumer protection or trading standards officer if you think something is wrong. <laughs> Mr and Mrs Wallace. Uh, we book a table for 8 o'clock. It's our anniversary. I'm sorry, there is no reservation made for that name. But if you'd like to wait a little while, I'm sure there will be a table for you soon. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, then we'll wait. I'll get some more. And while you're at it, how about another table off? This one's filthy. What do you mean? That's a modern design. It's not a stain. It's the menus. Never mind, dear. I'm sure the food will be nice. Lobster. Remember Paris. Oh, darling, how could I forget? Oh, I... Well, forget the lobster, then. Yes, madam, sir? Uh, I'd like a piece of red wine, please. No, oh, and I'll have the same. I'm afraid that's off. Oh, uh, steak then, please. Off. Scampi? Off. Trout? Off. Chicken Kiev for me then, please. Off. Pizza? 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 Yes. Pizza? Yes. Off. Lamb kebabs? Off. Ham? Off. Chicken salad? Off. Chili con carne and beans? Ah, uh, the beans. The bean and gone. <laughs> Off. Just what do you have on the menu? Soup and steak and kidney pie. You love it. We don't seem to have any choice. Okay, we'll have that then. Honestly, we should stay at home. Nah, it does you good to have a fling occasionally. Just get us the wine, please. Disgusting. Hang on, this glass is dirty. The glass dirty? Give it you. Oh. Oh. Now I think you'll find this wine's robustness. Oh. oh my god! It's gone right through! I'm soaked! Oh my god, you idiot! You think it's as bad as it first seems? Oh my god, really? It's soaking! Oh my god, there's a fly in my soup! Shh. Keep it quiet. Otherwise, everyone will walk me. Then, uh. Tiny. Oh, 
darling. No, darling. Just what are your rights in a situation like this? In a restaurant, you're entitled to expect wholesome food and reasonable service. Don't be afraid to complain if you're dissatisfied with either. Ask for the manager. If you don't feel happy about it, you can ask him to take the meal back and refuse to pay. But if you choose to eat your meal, you're obliged to pay a reasonable price for what you've eaten. If the restaurant is dirty, tell the environmental health department at your local town hall. And finally, when you book a table, you're making a contract between yourself and the restaurant, which is binding on both sides. So which holiday do you fancy? Um, oh, which choice? <laughs> I think I have to that one. Yeah, I'm not so first on that. I don't want that. I don't know. This is diet. Yeah. This one definitely. Yeah, I got yeah. the fritz. <laughs> like, nah. Hang on, where are we going? Okay. I don't like the sound of this. We'll have to take it into the garage. If we can get that far. Ladies, can I help you? <laughs> you can actually. Um, we brought the car in. Yes. And we're having a bit of a problem with it. There's no power behind it. So, um, well, I don't know. What it do you seems oh, we're yeah. having difficulty in starting. It seems to cut out quickly. Cutting out a lot. Um, and it's, you know, it's silly little things like getting up hills. There's just nothing behind it to push yeah. it up. Have you got any ideas? What it could be? Yes, I think you know what it could be. You do? Oh, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. Um, and well, any special hurry for it? Well, yes. Yeah, we see, we're going on holiday. That's what we needed yeah. the car for. Oh, that's okay. Um, what about cost? Oh, about sixty pounds, say. Yeah, go on. Think of the holiday. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Amount? Yes, I'm sorry, but when Rantia took it apart, we realised there was a lot of work they needed doing. Much more than we originally thought. you would have had to have had it done sooner or later anyway. Yes, but we've got to pick up the car today. We're going on holiday this afternoon. Well, that's no problem. You can have the car straight away. Just as soon as you've paid the bill. We're not paying for anything we never asked you to do. The car's not leaving this garage until you settle the bill, and that's that. You'd better give us our car right now or I'm calling the police. I don't think we want to go as far as that. I mean, surely. Who's right? Can't pay for the or well, both are to some extent. The law says a trader must do the job you both agreed on, so you shouldn't have to pay for work you didn't ask for. To avoid misunderstanding, give the trader a clear description of the problem or the work you want done. It's best to do it in writing. If it looks as though the work is going to be more difficult and take longer than was originally thought, you should be warned and asked for your permission to go ahead. Remember that an estimate is only a guideline, a rough costing. The final price could be higher, but it shouldn't be way over the top. If you disagree over the bill, the trader is entitled to hang on to your property until you pay up. In such a case, you should make it clear you are paying under protest, and then consult your local Consumer Protection and Trading Standards Department, Citizens Advice Bureau or Consumer Advice Centre about how to claim some of your money back. There are motor trade associations who have agreed codes of practice to improve customer service. This leaflet tells you all about them. You can pick up a free copy from any one of the agencies we've just mentioned. After all, the conventional parking meter not only needs emptying and winding up twice a day... It's only four weeks till Christmas. Where are we going to get the money from to pay for it all? It only just gets and buy as it is. And what about the kids? We've got to get them presents. And Tracy needs a new coat. Well, it's not my fault I got laid off. Do you think I like sitting around listening to you going on and on about it? I wasn't blaming you. 
I was just saying, where are we going to get the money? How the hell do I know? That's just your trouble. You don't seem to care. Oh, well, I've had enough of this. I'm not sitting this in your nagging. I'm going down the club. It's always the solution, isn't it? It's always up to me in the end. He doesn't give a damn. Well, I bet he's forgotten his fags and wants the money. Oh. Good day, madam. I wonder if I could just tell you about my new... No, thanks. I don't have any brushes, cleaning materials, or whatever you say. Oh, no. You misunderstand. I'm not selling. I'm giving. Oh. Perhaps I could come in and explain. All right, then. <clears throat> well, you see, we all need a little extra at Christmas. I know I do, and I'm sure you do too. My company can offer you a little extra cash for those special times. And you don't have to pay it back until you can afford to. With the cost of living the way it is, I'm surprised any of us can get by. Now, I'm sure that you could get all the things you need for your children with a sum like this. Oh, well, I don't know. The repayments on, say, £500 are extremely low. Oh, well, I'll have to ask my husband. Let's face it. We women run the household affairs. We hold the purse strings. I'm sure there'd be no problem. So if you sign here, I can give you that. 500 pounds right now. Think of the clothes you need for your children. The Christmas presents they want. That's right. Just sign here. Stop. Do you really know what you're doing? Dear Mrs. Jones, you have missed two consecutive repayments on your loan of £500. With reference to your loan of £500. I am sorry to say that we have Jones. still not received the amount And will be due. taking action we are to expecting the immediate repayment. What am I going to do? I've tried borrowing off one lot to pay the other. Oh, I had no idea it was going to be like this. I thought I could keep up the payments. I'm out of my mind with worry. Glad we caught you in, Mrs. Jones. Come, Come on, on, lad, get stuck in. I'll start with this. Anything that isn't nailed down. Stop! You can't do this! Get out of my house! You can't do this! Oh, yes, I can, Mrs. Jones. Do you remember? You signed this. Oh, but I'll pay it back. Just as soon as I get straight, I'll pay it back. Hey, love, you never know, guess I'm at the club. What's this, are you? Mr. Jones, I was just saying to Mrs. Jones here... All right, what are you selling? No, I'm not selling. More giving. A little money to tide you over. I know your game. Well, I'm giving too. Giving you the elbow. Out. But you're making a mistake. I... No, dear. You're making a mistake. Out. That's no solution. You're not calling lone sharks for nothing. I'm sorry I stormed off like that. I met Brian at the club. He's given me a few days' work, and if that goes okay, there'll be more. Oh, at last. Don't worry, love. We'll sort it out. Together. It is a criminal offence for someone to call uninvited at your home and offer to loan you money. The Consumer Credit Act 1974 also says that almost anyone involved in the credit business must have a special licence from the Office of Fair Trading. It's against the law to trade without one. If you take out an agreement with an unlicensed lender, you may not have to pay anything back, so it's worth checking with your local Consumer Protection or Trading Standards Department. They'll know if a trader is licensed or not. If you think your credit charges are sky high, you can go to court. 
If the court agrees you're being overcharged, the judge can cut your payments or order the lender to repay unreasonable interest charges. As a rule, only use reputable companies and compare interest rates before you enter into any credit agreement. Don't hand over social security or child benefit books to moneylenders. And don't worry, if you sign a credit agreement at home, like this lady, the law gives you a cooling off period or time to change your mind. Your Consumer Protection and Trading Standards Department can advise you. Yes, we come to collect our photographs. Name's Cartwright. I'll just get them. And let's see. Barton. Brown. Ah, here we are. Cartwright. I shall be 984, please. See. I can't wait to see them. Hey, these aren't ours. Pictures of animals at the zoo. My Uncle Harry's a bit rough, but he doesn't look that bad. Well, I don't think it's very funny. I'm sorry, there seems to be a mix-up. I'll just go and get yours. Now, let's see. They're not here. How about here? No. Uh, you must have them somewhere. They are wedding photographs. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Cartwright. Um, they seem to be... Uh, Lost. What? Perhaps I could offer you a refund. Say the cost of a replacement film. But they were the only photos taken of the wedding. Aunt Minnie came all the way from Canada. It can never be the same again. That's no good. We deliberately chose the most expensive processing because we wanted top quality photographs. And now we've got nothing at all. I'm sorry, sir. I could offer you, say, ten pound. Purely a suggestion of goodwill, you understand. What can I do? If a trader loses or damages your property, you're entitled to compensation in keeping with the value of that property. Here, the film processor's offer is clearly inadequate. If the offer is still not improved upon, you can take action in the small claims court. This leaflet tells you how. It's free from any Citizens Advice Bureau, Consumer Advice Centre, Trading Standards or Consumer Protection Department. Their advisers can tell you what to do. It isn't difficult, and you don't need to use a solicitor. Right then, we want fair compensation for losing our wedding photographs, and you're going to have to come up with a better offer than £10. If we don't, we'll sue you for the proper amount. Oh, David, I love it when you're so masterful. <laughs> And would you, Mrs. Roberts, in your own words, please tell the court exactly what happened? Well, I was down the market in town. I thought I'd get some of those nice packets of Davis to sell. Is that the Davis for the pet shop? No, love. It's the one next door to the fashion shop. Oh, well, anyway, oh, my husband died. Oh, he loves them. Will yes, yes, will you please get on with the point? Oh, yes. Well, anyway... I was passing a little shop at the bottom and saw that he was selling a second-hand electric fire. Cheap. Well, so you can have a look. You see our front room, it's ever so drafty. Oh, my husband feels a cold, something chronic. It was ever since his accident. It's on top of the wardrobe. <coughs> I fail to see the significance of that last remark. Oh, well, I'll get to the point. Would you? 
I bought it for a fiver. I took it home. I plugged it in. I hadn't even touched a switch when it gave a terrific shock. Oh, I tell you, it set me back on my heels. I had to go to the hospital. They said I had second class burns. Second class? Degree. Oh, well, anyway, it was very nasty. What's more, I've got a little kitty of three. Now, what would have happened if she had touched it? I hate to think. Yes, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Call Mr. Ronald Parker. Would Mr. Ronald Parker please stand? No, Mr. Parker. I understand you have a shop dealing in various second-hand items, such as furniture, carpet, and various domestic appliances. What of it? Just answer the question, please, young man. That is correct. Thank you. Tell me, prior to putting electrical appliances in your shop, do you ever check if there are any possible faults? Well, uh, I usually clean it up a bit. You know, make it look presentable. I didn't really mean that. Do you check if it's safe? Well, not exactly, no. Not exactly. Do you ever check the wiring? Or look at the plug to see if it's correctly connected. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Um, it's simple. The, the brown one goes to the left, and the, the blue one on top. No, or is it red? Um, no, hang on a minute. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Tell me, are you conversant with the Electrical Equipment Safety Regulations 1975? Sorry? Did you know that by law, all domestic appliances must be properly earthed and insulated, that they mustn't get too hot while being used, that leads have to be fitted with cord grips so that they aren't pulled loose. Uh, well, uh... And under the Electrical Appliances Colour Code Regulations 1969, all domestic electrical appliances which have three core flexes must be coloured like this, blue for neutral, brown for live, and yellow and green what earth? Uh, well, it's a lot to remember, isn't it? Quite. My colleagues and I find you guilty of supplying a faulty electrical appliance, and we order you to pay a fine of £200. Remember, how to change a plug correctly with the right fuse. And please, be especially careful when buying second-hand goods. Did you realise that there are over two million accidents in the home each year, and of these, approximately 2,000 involve electrical equipment? If you've bought something you think is dangerous, Tell your Consumer Protection and Trading Standards Department. It's their job to enforce the safety laws and to prosecute traders who break them.
trader must do a job within a reasonable time and to a reasonable standard. If your property is damaged through the trader's neglect, then you can ask for compensation. But the amount you can claim relates to the value of the article at the time you submitted it, not its replacement value. The ABLC is a trade association representing many dry cleaners and laundress. Their voluntary code of practice says that if the clothes are not satisfactorily cleaned, then the dry cleaner will re-clean them free of charge if you agree. If you're still not satisfied with the result, you can write to the association or get advice from your local Consumer Protection or Trading Standards Department, Citizens Advice Bureau or Consumer Advice Centre. If you want to get a better deal, look out for this logo. Oh yes, I think you'll be all right tonight, Sir, my son. Once the girls get a load of your Rambo-like physique here. <laughs> no, they say girls make passes of blue twin glasses. Yeah, we'll be all right. Well, I think the disco's open now. Then we go in, or what? Hey, don't leave me this way. La 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 la. All right, lads. All right. Well, please quieten down. Now then, I suggest if you go in, you leave anything of value here. We don't want anything getting pinched now, do we? You got anything of value then, sir? <laughs> and you? Well. I bet you the jacket. Put the jacket. Ah, thank you, sir. Oh, Come on, you need. Oh, yes. Hey, careful what you do with that. Your special jacket. What an exciting conversationist you are, Luigi. Well, give him a ticket, you idiot. Come on. So? Come on, then. I suppose you might be useful for something. Perhaps you can make it into glue. Yes, yes. Hey, they got no money. Hey, they got no friends. Hey, they only got what? Don't tell me. You want it at the time? No. You you want a spaghetti, yeah? No. You want a yokos, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, Luigi. Bye bye. Well, I didn't fancy yours much, did I? Talk about the face I mentioned a thousand chips. Right, you are, mate. Come on, Luigi, man. I see. Look, I'm sorry, it's 11 o'clock, and I'm afraid you've all got to go, so come on out. Well, he's got my coat. Look, I'm sorry, very regrettable, I know, but... Well, I can't go without my jacket, can I? I'm sorry. Oh, no. So, if you wouldn't mind, out. Hang on. Did you know that because of the unfair contract terms, huh? 1977, notices like that are meaningless. You certainly are responsible for his jacket. Now, look here. You were legally bound to compensate my friend here, and that does not affect his rights at all. In fact, the onus is on you to prove it's reasonable. <laughs> now, let's not be hasty. I mean, you failed to take reasonable care of the garment, and I must warn you that unless proper compensation is made, the matter will be taken to the county court. How much did you say the jacket was worth? Well, it was new. It cost me 75 quid. 75 pounds? If you think I'm going to... Shall we see you in court? Get out. 
bloody smart Alex. Yeah, bloody smart Alex. And you, Luigi, I'd like a word with you now in my office. Said hello, would you do that? It was great, it was great, thanks. I don't know who that manager thought he was, but he got back where you like, it was great. I tell you, I don't mind the name. Well, the music, Jill. I know, I can't have any music. Oh, I owe you a pint without many on, it's just great. Well, I like it a lot, but like, oh. How did you lose my jacket, though? I'd buy you another one, I suppose. If something of yours is lost or stolen like this, ask for compensation. Don't be put off by notices. It's up to the management to prove they're fair. And it'll be up to you to prove how much your property is worth. Get it right. Get it right. So if you have problems with the trader, you've purchased defective goods, or you're just not happy with the service you've received, don't think that there isn't anything you can do. Make sure you know where you stand with the law and get it right.